What is going on everyone? Are you sick of the city? Want to find a nice rural town, get a mortgage and call it good? Who doesn't, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in California. Yes, they have some, so close your mouth. This is the fifth video in this series. We did the entire United States. We did New Hampshire, Montana, and Tennessee was our last one. Today we're looking at the Golden State. A couple things about rural California towns. They rarely have jobs like most rural towns, so you have to bring one or not need one, like retired or whatever. And you'll want to look into getting solar panels for whatever house you buy in California. California gets a lot of sun and all the utilities in the Golden State are extremely high, natural gas, water, and especially electricity. With the towns in these videos, we are looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city, it's easy on the crime rate, not five hours away from a hospital, and not so far out in the sticks where you can't get decent internet. Those things knock a lot of really nice small towns off these lists. When you don't have internet, you can't work from home, and if there's not a hospital, doctor's office, or clinic or something nearby, and you're getting up there in age, not a great place for you to live. In the last video, I explained that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a reach and shouldn't really be on the list. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look at seven great rural towns in California. Number 7. Ferndale, California we start off in Northern California in Ferndale. This is a part of the state that's called the Lost Coast of California. It's about a 30 minute drive south from Eureka, California. The history of this town is in the dairy industry. Ferndale is surrounded by a bunch of farmland near the mouth of the Eel River with forested foothills to its south. This is a beautiful part of the state and it's a beautiful small town. It's got old Victorian homes all over the place. The downtown looks like a freaking movie set. Housing here is up there. Houses here are expensive just like all of California. But in my opinion, it's a little less than I expected for such a beautiful town so close to the ocean. There's currently nothing for sale in like downtown Ferndale, but on the outskirts, you have a couple places. One's going for like 600,000, then there's another one for about 500,000 with a vacant lot for sale right now for 400,000. Late last year and in February of this year, they sold a few homes for around 700,000. And that's normally what you could expect, I would say right about now, to get something decent, livable, that's nice. You'll be lucky if you find something that's a little bit run down for under 400,000 thousand in or around Ferndale. But it's California, so it's to be expected. We keep getting comments whenever I say something is expensive like this and people, nobody could afford that. And like I said in the last video, yes, people can afford that. If people couldn't afford those prices, they wouldn't be those prices. Some people can. So Ferndale gets a faded thumbs up when it comes to real estate because they don't have a lot of options. And when they do have options, it's pretty expensive. Like right now they have a home that's got 1700 acres and you could see the ocean from the property and it's going for just under $6 million. When it comes to the crime rate, it's outstanding in Ferndale. It's 31% lower than the national average, so they get a big thumbs up for that one. And their internet is pretty decent, and I'm surprised for being such a small town out in the middle of nowhere. They get 99% of the town is covered by Suddenlink, which they say you can get up to 940 megabits per second, so that's solid. When it comes to healthcare, you got a few options. Ferndale has a small community health center here, which isn't terribly big, but about 20 minutes to the east of Ferndale, you have Fortuna, right across the Eel River, and they have a couple places. They have the Providence Redwood Memorial Hospital, and they also have the Fortuna Family Medical Group. So you've got some options. And then if you need anything past that, you can always head up to Eureka. So they get a thumbs up when it comes to healthcare. Number six, Weaverville, California. Weaverville came to my attention from an email. I'm getting ready to do a series on small towns that need some new blood, that need some attention, you know, do our part to help save a small town. A lot of small towns are suffering, and I got an email from a nice woman from Weaverville. Weaverville is one of those small towns that have everything. It has the healthcare we need, the internet, low crime, fresh air, good people. I will be visiting there this summer, and I'll give you a more detailed explanation on what's going on in Weaverville. But Weaverville is about an hour west of Redding, California, and they have just under four. 4,000 residents that enjoy a crime rate that's 30% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to their internet, they have a few options. You have velocity cable internet that gives about 150 megabytes per second to almost 90% of the town. It also says that they have DSL from Frontier that covers about 97% of the town with 50 Mbps. So I don't know, Frontier, I thought they were going out of business, but apparently they're still here. They were here near my home in Oregon, but now it's called Zipley or something like that. Thought they got bought out, but I guess not. 
Regardless, always check before you move to any small town and don't go off just what I'm saying about the internet because you can get a house someplace that doesn't, you know, get internet from any of these companies. So make sure you check first. Like I said, the crime rate here is solid. It's 30% lower than the national average, so they get a thumbs up for that one. Their internet gets a thumbs up. When it comes to healthcare, they have the Trinity Hospital, which, in my opinion, is pretty good size for a town this small. They also have a couple different doctor's offices. They also have a dentist in town and an orthodontist. Anything past that, you just gotta head out to Reading, not too far away, and Reading's a good size city and should have everything you need. So they get a big thumbs up for their healthcare. The downtown is filled with cute little shops and like Ferndale, it looks like a movie set downtown. They got a brewing company called Trinity County Brewing, Mama Llama's Eatery and Cafe, New York Saloon, that sounds fun, and the Red Dragon Chinese place. So they got everything you need here. Unlike Ferndale, it is affordable to buy places here. They have a bunch of places that look decent, livable, and ready to move in, in between $250,000 and $350,000, which isn't terrible. Now they do have some places that are a little outside of town with a little bit of property that go for upwards of like $800,000 on up. You can also grab lots of land that go for as low as 30,000 up to I think one was like 140,000 just for a plot of land. So they get a big thumbs up for real estate because you got a lot of options here. This is a nice town. You got a lake which is drying up right now because all lakes in California are drying up. But you have Trinity Lake right down the road, which is nice. Weaverville has a little less than 4,000 residents. Number five, Cambria, California. Cambria is a seaside town in California between Monterey and Santa Barbara along Highway 1. This is one of the greatest road trips you can ever take up Highway 1. The ocean's right there on the left 90% of the time. Cambria is one of the small towns you go through. Cambria is an extremely expensive city to live in. It's beautiful and it's situated right amongst all these Monterey Pines. It's one of the cutest little towns you'll come across taking that route. Cambria sits about 40 minutes west of Paso Robles, which is probably the closest big city there. Morro Bay isn't that big. San Luis Obispo is kind of close too, but Paso Robles is a little bit bigger. When it comes to healthcare, it's a little weird. They got like five separate doctor's offices, and judging by the price of the property here, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other doctors just wandering around the town. They have a small clinic called the Cambria Community Health District, and that's got a couple doctors there and ambulances and all that. Anything past what they can give you, you're going to have to go into Paso Robles, which, like I said, is only 40 minutes away. So for healthcare, they get a thumbs up. When it comes to Internet, you got no worries there. Spectrum covers about 98% of the town and you can get one gig. So they get a big thumbs up for their internet. Now, when it comes to real estate, this place is a little bit weird. I mean, it's expensive, but it's a little bit weird. On the south side of town, you have normal sized homes where it's a normal community. The houses are almost the same size as the lot. Typical suburban American homes. And if you find one for under $700,000, it's a freaking unicorn. These are normal homes that in most any state, let's say Missouri, would probably go for about $225,000. Oregon, they probably go for about $500,000. In California, they go for over seven, dollars $750,000. No pool, no wine cellar, just a normal home. Then dotted around the rest of the town, you have million dollar homes, but they don't just stop at one million. Some of them are two and almost three million dollars. So they get a faded thumbs up for that because it's just too expensive for the average Joe, but they are beautiful homes, so I'll give them that. Cambria has a population of just under 6,000 residents and they enjoy a crime rate that is 40% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that one. All in all, if you can afford it, Cambria is beautiful and it might be worth it if, like I said, you can afford it. Number four, Mariposa, California. Back to the inland part of California, we go near Yosemite and more reasonable real estate. The town of Mariposa was first settled in 1849 and they had this chain of gold rush towns is what they called them. This was the southernmost of those gold rush towns. A year after it was founded, they actually laid down the streets and the man that did it was John C. Fremont. He's a big deal in California. Technically, Mariposa isn't a town. It's a census designated area in Mariposa County, but most people just call Mariposa. This is not a bad place to live. Good clean air, beautiful scenery, and plenty of things to do. And like I said, reasonable real estate. Just poking around Zillow, you can get decent homes here for around $300,000. Anything below that, you're going to need to probably do a little extra work. But right around four hundred dollars to $450,000, you are going to get something nice. And it's probably going to come with a couple acres. And just like any place in California, you have homes that are over $700,000 and get up way over a million. 
If you need to go into a bigger city for healthcare or whatever, you got Modesto or you got Fresno. That's like not the best choices. It's almost like choosing between heat stroke and hypothermia. Mariposa sits about 45 minutes east of Merced, California, which Merced is right between Fresno and Modesto. And that would be where you'd have to go if you had some kind of medical thing you needed taken care of that they couldn't cover in Mariposa. Now, Mariposa does have a pretty decent medical facility called the John C. Fremont Health District. But, you know, they're not terribly big, so you'd probably go to Merced and get anything taken care of that they can't handle there. So they get a thumbs up for health care. As far as real estate goes, Mariposa gets a thumbs up. Mariposa has a little over 2,000 residents, and they have a crime rate that is 41% lower than the national average. That's outstanding, especially for this part of California. I mean, it's far enough away from Fresno and Modesto, but still, it's kind of in that area. When it comes to internet in Mariposa, you have Sierra Tel, which I guess stands for telephone, but they cover about 99% of Mariposa. They have DSL and fiber, where you can get up to 800 megabytes per second. So they get a thumbs up there too. Not bad. Number three, Quincy, California. Quincy, California is a nice little mountain town that uh, they got kind of close to getting burned down a couple years ago with one of the forest fires they had up there. The town of Quincy is actually considered another census designated area, but people really don't refer to it as that. They call it the town of Quincy. But Quincy is in Palumas County, sitting about an hour and a half west of Reno, Nevada. That's probably where you'd have to go if you wanted any form of entertainment past, I don't know, fending off wildfires from your house. Quincy has a good sized hospital on the west side of town. It's called the Plumas District Hospital, which it's a pretty good sized place for such a small town. Now, I understand that normally when you have a hospital this size in a small town, it's deep dealing with the county, and that's what's going on here. My friend Stacy from high school, she lives in Quincy. I think she's a school teacher there. One of the sweetest girls I know. Women, lady now, I guess, now that we're closing in on 50 here. But I guess when you've known someone since they were like 14, they're kind of still a girl in your head. I don't know. Anyway, Quincy gets a thumbs up when it comes to health care. As far as real estate, it's kind of a mixed bag here. It ranges. It goes anywhere from 200000 all the way up to 600000 I would say anything over 300000 is going to be pretty decent. You want to build your own cabin? They have plenty of lots going from anywhere from 12000 up to like 175000 So they get a thumbs up because they are fairly reasonable for California and they have a lot to choose from. When it comes to internet, they have DSL from AT&T that covers about 96% of the town with 25 megabytes. But luckily, they have another one called Plumas Sierra Telecommunications, which has cable and fiber where you can get a gig. The downside is they only cover about 70% of the town. So they get a thumbs up still. Quincy has almost 2,000 residents and they enjoy a crime rate that is 49% lower than the national average. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. Number two, Kernville, California. Kernville's a nice little town in, I guess it's still Southern California, but I like to call it Central California. It sits in the Sequoia National Forest, sort of, and it is about an hour east of Bakersfield. This is a great little town. My wife's uh, father has property there. We used to go up there in the summers all the time and go rafting down the Kern River. Lake Isabella's right there, so there's a lot of things to do here. As far as healthcare goes, you got the Kern Valley Hospital on the other side of Lake Isabella, about 20 minutes away from Kernville. It's a pretty good sized place and you should get most things taken care of there. If you can't and you need something more, you got to go into Bakersfield about an hour away. So they get a big thumbs up for healthcare because they're not doing bad. When it comes to internet, you got Mediacom out there and 95% of the homes can get Mediacom and they have one gig internet there. After that, you got like Kern Valley Wireless gives you fixed wireless for 50 megs and they cover like 96% of the town. Now, like I've said in other videos, you always got HughesNet and Viasat, but those aren't the best. You know, you get cloudy days and you don't get internet. Weird stuff like that with satellite. I've had to deal with Hughes internet for a couple days at a time on vacations and stuff. Every single time it was a freaking nightmare. So they get a big thumbs up for internet because Minicom's pretty good. And when it comes to real estate, this is California, so things are going to be a little expensive. You can get trailers there they have like trailer parks for under a hundred thousand probably under sixty thousand in most cases but they also have homes for around three hundred thousand three hundred thousand is your starting point in between three and four hundred thousand you should be able to find something decent to live and of course they've got really really nice ones that start off around seven hundred thousand and work their way up if you want, you can go extra cheap and uh, live in a van down by the river. So real estate, they get a thumbs up too because they've got a lot of options for you there. And they're fairly reasonable for California. 
The town of Kernville has less than a thousand people, but during the summer when people start coming up there for the lake and the river, it swells to about 3,000 people or thereabouts. But they're still able to maintain a crime rate that's 55% lower than the national average. Outstanding, Kernville. They get a big thumbs up for that one. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Truckee, California. Truckee, California is one of the most beautiful small towns I've ever been through or visited. I visited when I was a little bit young, probably 16, 17, and I've been through there a couple other times, had lunch or whatever, and it's just a beautiful, nice little place to hang out and be. It's expensive, and it's in the Sierra Nevada, so you know it's going to be beautiful, but it's expensive. Truckee is about 30 minutes southwest of Reno, Nevada, and it's not too far from Donner Lake and Lake Tahoe. It has the Truckee River going right through town, and it's really close to the Donner Party Memorial Site. If you don't know about the Donner Party, they are a bunch of pioneers that got stuck in the Sierra Nevadas in the winter and may or may not have resorted to cannibalism at one point. I saw some movie about it or some TV show when I was a kid, probably about 11 or 12, and anytime we ever ever went camping or anything up there. I was just totally afraid, you know, the worst was going to happen up there. When it comes to real estate, Truckee, you know, it's beautiful. It's in the Sierra Nevadas. It's near skiing and everything you want to do. It's expensive. Like I had said, you could find homes anywhere from 600,000 on up to 3.5 million. Okay. So they're all over the map here. They do have some like, uh, condos and townhomes that'll go for about 250,000 but that's about as low as you'll ever see they get a faded thumbs up not because it's bad it's just so expensive the average person can't really afford to ever buy a house here Truckee has several options when it comes to internet. One of them's got to fit what you need. You got the Pluma Sierra Telecommunications, which has one gig, and they say they supply it to 99% of the homes in Truckee. You also have Suddenlink, which covers about 99% of the town. They give you almost a gig. You have another place called Oasis Broadband. They have 100 Mbps, and about 75% of Truckee can get that. So they get a big thumbs up. For their internet, they got all kinds of options. Truckee also has a solid hospital, it's Tahoe Forest Hospital, and they got all kinds of mountain medical centers and outpatient things. They've got everything you need here in Truckee, so you're good to go. And I imagine if there is anything else you need, Reno is right there 30 minutes away, so they get a big thumbs up for healthcare. One thing I will mention, they have a you know 24-hour emergency room here, which a lot of these places that I mentioned, these small towns, don't have. Truckee has around 16,000 uh, residents, which is a little high for this list. They're almost at that 20,000 mark where they fall out of the small town area, but they're really spread out, so it really does feel like a small town. Those residents enjoy a crime rate that is 70% below the national average. Bravo, Truckee. You get a big thumbs up for that one. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below what state you want to see us do next. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.